Educating students in rural settings is an important part of public education in America. More than half of all school districts and a third of all public schools are in rural areas. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, over 12 million students attend a rural public elementary or secondary school, accounting for 25% of all public school students. Unrecognized by most Americans and often overshadowed by the nation's attention to dropout challenges in urban settings, more than one-fifth of public schools in rural America have higher than average dropout rates. Because of their remote locations and more limited resources, schools in rural communities often have less access to high-quality technical assistance than schools in other communities. For this reason, the U.S. Department of Education's High School Graduation Initiative Program provided dropout prevention support and technical assistance to grantees and districts across the country. This video highlights dropout prevention efforts in rural districts and schools in North Carolina. North Carolina places a strong emphasis on ensuring that all students graduate from high school. The North Carolina Department of Education encourages students from every part of the state to attain a high school diploma with a readiness to pursue college or career. In order to achieve this goal in some of the most rural areas, a strong commitment is made to personalized learning and support of alternative education that may provide each and every student an opportunity to succeed. North Carolina has enjoyed a history of increasing its graduation rate over the last decade, and we've reduced dropout rates. There are many reasons why that has happened in our state. First, graduation rate has been, has been brought to the attention of our parents, our teachers, our administrators, and our students. And so the first step in solving a problem is to bring the attention of that problem to the public. Every student comes here with a story um, and how to be as preventative as we can and less reactive, but it sometimes takes us a little bit to figure out the kids, what's going to work with the kids. The alternative school here at Davidson County High School has taken many forms over the last 40 years. Um, we have received a school improvement grant most recently, which helped shape the school into what you see today. And that grant provided uh, training for teachers, the computer hardware and software that allows us to personalize the learning that our students have access to each and every day. We also receive um, an allocation from our county commissioners to support this school each year, as well as our board is committed to lining local funds um, to ensure that we have this school and we have the staff that is, that is necessary to support our students. We are our alternative school. In our alternative school, we focus on, um, basically we focus on juniors and seniors who for whatever reason have derailed and how can we get them back on track to graduation. We have a suspension center that serves the entire county. Um, it serves for short-term suspensions. You might be here for one day, but it gives you a space that's not sitting at home. You come here, your work is sitting here, you complete it. Um, I go into that room at least once a day and, and check around and see what students are in there. Um, the counselor will go in and meet with them and talk with them. Sometimes we'll call a social worker to come in and talk with them. Um, and the, the teacher that runs that, she gets to know them and, and builds that relationship. So even if it's one day, you know, we're still like, okay, when you go back, you're not going to do this again. You know, so we're trying to build that piece. The blended approach here at Davidson County High School I think is one of the keys to our success. We provide the students the academic access to courses online and that can be delivered at different points during the day. That can be delivered in different venues. But our students also have access to their teachers and those teachers work very hard to get to know our students, to build relationships with our students and really find out what makes them tick and help them through their struggles, support them through those struggles, and turn those struggles into success. So by using the blended approach, we feel like that is really one of the um, items here at Davidson County High School that has really helped our students and enhanced their ability to stay in school and ultimately graduate from high school and receive that golden carrot, which is the diploma. It's 
self-paced learning. There's, uh, you have classroom time with actual teachers and other students, but also you can work on your own, learning on your own, because really in the real world, you have to do that. You have to work on your own. Um, I like e uh, the Education 2020, whatever. I personally like that because I can work at my own pace and, you know, like understand it, you know what I'm saying? I've always liked the uh, online classes anyway than being in front of a teacher, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I'm being put on the spot. And it's different. Students have challenges that they bring to school, but we have ways in which, through the school system, through utilizing partner agencies, we can help students and families overcome some of these challenges. So we can try to break the cycle of poverty, so we can increase the economic development in Davidson County, and so we can bring our students back to us after high school, after two-year, four-year school, so they want to come back and be productive citizens here in our community and really contribute to what we have to offer. Hyde County is a rural school district situated near the Outer Banks of North Carolina. It houses two school sites, Matamuskeet Early College High School on the mainland of Swan Quarter and Ocracoke School located on Ocracoke Island, a 16 mile stretch of land that is only accessible via plane or ferry. The area attracts tourists due to its unique rural setting, while the residents must become accustomed to the logistical challenges of living and working in such a remote location. I'll never forget when my discussion with central office, the lady kept saying, and we talked for a week and she kept saying, you really need to come and experience Ochre Coke before you decide you, really, you want to do this. So she kept saying that and, uh, and I kept thinking, man, this you know, and she's telling about the ferry and, you know, I, I, I just never put everything together until I come to interview and I get on the ferry and it gets stuck on a sandbar the very first time I'm coming over to, and I'm spending a week here, I, I, I arrive on a Monday morning and I'm the last interview on Friday evening and the first thing that happened was oh, we got stuck on a sandbar and I remember thinking, holy cow. Geography of our county is such that we have an island that is two and a half hours away from the mainland. The island school is Ocracoke School, and the demographics at the Ocracoke campus, as well as the economics of the island, are totally different from the geography and the economics and what happens here on the Madame Mesquite campus. Our community definitely has influenced um, my education. You feel more obligated to stay in school, do your best, get all A's. Um, they push you. My family's been a very big support system throughout this time. You know, everybody kind of looks after each other and it's still a great place to raise your kids and go to school. Wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, the, ad, the adage, it takes a village. I mean, that is Ocracoke in a nutshell. Uh, some things that are different or are unique from Ocracoke School than most places are the communication between the faculty and the parents. That's definitely a benefit of being here in Ocracoke is that I do get to see them. Uh, sometimes uh, some of my students that I met in 2011, I've been able to watch them progress um, and I've gotten to know them so well. Um, and it's also the, the great thing of the island and of the village is that if I need to talk to a parent, I don't have to call. I mean, I can call or I can just hop on my bike and go see them. I mean, I know where everybody works and where everybody lives. I truly think that because our school is so small, the student-teacher ratio, you get to learn so much from your teachers here. They will help you with whatever you need. Any questions you need answered, they will answer them to their best abilities. There's always challenges anywhere. We're a rural area, so um, transportation is a big issue for our students and parents. Um, we have students that may ride over an hour, hour and 20 minutes just to get on our campus and then commute maybe to the local uh, college, which is about 60 miles away, and then they do the same routine on the way back. So we do have students spending, unfortunately, a large amount of time on um, the bus. I think we've done a lot of things, um, even though we're a small system, I think we've done a lot of things. The 21st Century Program, uh, I think, has been a big success in which they can get assistance after school, also be involved in different trips and activities. Sports, of course, is a motivator for students. 
different clubs that we have, beta club, um, multicultural club. I think all of those things have helped. There's so much for them to do in the community, and there's so much available at the school that it gives them um, the stimulus that they need. They're not bored. That I believe that if you have a kid and there's structure and there's availability of all kinds of stuff, that, that they'll do the right thing. But if they don't have you know, a good core foundation and they don't have supervision and they don't have something to do, then they're gonna get in trouble. Madam Mesquite Early College High School uh, offers students a five-year program that might not normally have an opportunity to take college classes, and they can through this program not only for free, but also provide we provide transportation and um, textbooks and associated fees. Um, many of the students, this is a, a very rural area. It uh, is economically depressed. Um, all of our students uh, through community community eligibility participation all receive free breakfast and lunch. So because of some of the constraints that the environment, this area, uh, has, many of our students have not previously had opportunities to go to college, post-secondary experiences, and we're able through the New Schools Project provide these opportunities for students. We're also giving our students more choice in uh, pathways that they can take to get over the finish line of graduating from high school. We have offerings in uh, career technical education, arts education, JROTC. We have our students uh, having the option of enrolling in our virtual high school. And our virtual North Carolina virtual school gives students the opportunity to have a different type of learning experience in order to be able to graduate. Many schools have started credit recovery programs where students would not have to start from the very beginning to get credit, but they would start where they need to address weaknesses. We also know that bringing our partners in uh, post-secondary education, our community colleges, to the table to help improve graduation rates through uh, having the opportunities for students to enroll in early colleges, to take courses at the community college level or even at our university level, all contribute to our increasing our graduation rates. Ocracoke, we have 168 students. Uh, a lot of the parents came here and uh, from Mexico and they work two and three jobs and they want their children to, to have a better life than, than what they've had. And it's amazing uh, the, the, the cooperation we get from them and from all of our parents. Uh, I came to America when I was in fifth grade. I didn't know anything you know, of English. The teachers, didn't, uh, the teachers stayed after school, even after school hours. Uh, they didn't have to. 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 They didn't have you know, one of the things when there was a success for Miguel is academically it was, a, it was a hard struggle for him. And so when we had gotten through the academic requirements that he needed before he graduated, we really thought about, you know, I, I sat down with him and I said, what do you like to do? And he said, I like to cook. And so that was a wonderful opportunity to get him into the community. Um, and he was able to work with different people that he probably will never right. cross their paths again. He did um, one day where he, he, some Debbie Wells who used to own some restaurants here, showed him everything to do with an egg. So those are opportunities that our community is able to offer because of, size is part of it, but also because they care. Especially those students that have come to our school system with a zero knowledge of English or mastery is helping them get the basics so they can succeed in the classroom. Uh, but on the other side, which I find as important as helping my students, is also having those parents at home be connected with us. Ha habido maestros, han habido profesores o como le puedo decir este mentores que me han ayudado a que mis hijos sigan estudiando. 
Providing ESL support to the students in rural areas who are English language learners is yet another way that North Carolina is connecting to and valuing each and every student so that they not only succeed in school, but also in life. I would say that graduating high school is the ultimate confidence booster. It has made me want to learn and has made me want to go to school, has made me want to make something of myself and realize that I can. I think that graduating opens other doors for you. I think there's levels to it and graduating high school is only at the beginning. It's the first stepping stone and it's just so much more than a degree. When when you get to the point where you're like, okay, I'm a high school graduate, it kind of tells you, if I can do this, then I can go get my master's. I can go get my doctorates. I mean, it, it kind of puts you in a position where you feel like you're able to reach the goals that you preset for yourself.